If you've been watching my channel for any time at all, you probably know that I don't really tackle controversial theological issues. And to be completely honest, it's simply because if that's what you're looking for, there's gonna be a whole lot of other guys on YouTube that have a lot more letters before their names. It's gonna be able to answer those more thoroughly than I'll be able to. I am a youth pastor and I spend a lot of time studying the scripture and learning, but my ultimate goal here is to encourage you guys to go out and live the calling of Jesus, and that's to go out and live a bold life and to reach other people for Jesus. So I'm gonna tackle the topic of the Trinity today. If you're familiar with Trinitarian arguments, you know that this can be a very controversial subject. So I'm gonna tackle this in a different light. Not necessarily what is the Trinity, but why is the Trinity. I don't know about you guys, but I just never completely got algebra. I remember making that transition in like seventh and eighth grade where suddenly there were letters in our equations. And it's just at that point that my brain was just like fried and it's like, dude, I don't get this. You're on your own, peace, you know, and, and it just didn't click. And I remember at some point it finally did that suddenly something in my brain just flipped and I understood. But for some reason, the Trinity has always kind of been like algebra to me that I think and I think. And when I think I understand it, my brain goes, no, no, it's, it still doesn't make sense. And I feel like that's sort of how the Trinity is for a lot of us. And, and we can do all of the illustrations that, that the Trinity is like water. You know, water can be ice, it can be liquid, it can be vapor. And we can think of, you know, each form of God in that. But still that breaks down. It's not completely accurate because the Trinity isn't forms of God. It's, it's full persons of God. Right? And then water has to exist as one or the other, right? It can't exist as all three at once, whereas the Trinity is Father, Son, Holy Spirit all at once. So even, even that illustration breaks down. And, and then one of my students brought this one up. It says the Trinity is sort of like three in one shampoo. It is shampoo, conditioner, and body wash all in one. And that one sort of makes sense, I guess. But even it has its flaws. So Every time I try to understand the Trinity, I find myself just getting a little bit baffled. And maybe that's where you are too. And I want to encourage you that understanding the Trinity is not necessary for your salvation. However, believing in the Trinity, I believe, is, and that may be challenged. I don't want to get controversial, okay? I don't want to get controversial. If you don't believe that, cool. Slap that dislike button. Don't comment down below. I'm probably not going to answer it, just to be honest. My intention is not to cause controversy within Christianity. I want to bring believers together so that Jesus may be known throughout the world. That is my goal. I don't want to argue with you. I promise I don't. So I want to talk today, not necessarily on what is the Trinity, but why is the Trinity? See, I think it's interesting when we look through the Bible that we can see all three persons of God. Sometimes they're in the same place at the exact same time. Other times we see them individually. For example, in the Old Testament, I think a lot of what we hear is Father God, but a lot of what we see is Jesus, the Son of God, right? You see, the Bible says that Father God is so powerful that we cannot look directly upon His face. So every time we see God in the flesh, every time a human sees God in the flesh, I believe that is Jesus, the Son. Still God, but the Son. That whenever there is God walking with man, whenever God makes an appearance that's called a Christophany, that is an appearance of Jesus Christ, you know, in the Old Testament, that is the Son, God the Son, coming to man. Because God the Father, we can't actually look upon His face. So Old Testament, a lot of times we have God the Father speaking, right? And in the New Testament, of course, through the Gospels, we have God the Son, Jesus Christ, walking with man, you know, healing, blind eyes, reaching people, ministering, eventually going to die for our sins. That is God the Son. Then all throughout the Old Testament and the New and coming up into Acts and kind of going forward, we see the Spirit of God. We see Holy Spirit God, God still fully God, but the Holy Spirit coming out. Why do I believe that God is these three different persons, still forming one God, but three individual persons? And it wasn't until I looked at these persons individually that I started to realize that it's almost like a step, right? Because we see Father God. 
Father God could not actually be directly in our presence. His power, you know, it says that, you know, Moses caught his passing backside and Moses' face glowed from the presence of God. That's how powerful Father God is. So Father God had to stay contained within tabernacles, within temples. But you see, I don't think God was happy with that. God wasn't okay with staying at a distance. So that's when God the Son decided to come to earth. Yes, he had a mission and he had a purpose, but God was never okay staying at a distance. Remember, we were built to be in community with God. In the garden, we walked hand in hand, side by side, step for step with God. That was always his intention for us. So Jesus comes, Jesus the Son, still God, comes to be with us here on earth. Yes, to serve a mission because God loves us and God has a purpose for us and God knew that our sins can never be wiped away with anything but perfect blood. So God took his perfect blood, put it on that cross to wipe away all sin and death. That was the purpose that Jesus came. But when we look at Jesus coming, that was just another step. Father God was in the temple. He wasn't okay with staying that far away. So he took a step forward and he, he came to be with us. You see, Father God was in the temple. Jesus was with us. And then we see in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit comes. And again, that is God taking another step because Jesus had to ascend. He had to go back to his rightful throne with the Father. But then he sends the Holy Spirit, which is known as the Comforter because Jesus was with us and now the Holy Spirit is within us. That's another step. It's God becoming more and more vulnerable, starting in a temple, coming to be in our presence, and finally coming to be within us. You see, God loved us so much that he wasn't okay staying at a distance. You see, every time I read the Bible, I get this one underlying theme that God loves you, no matter what. His love is not conditional. You are his creation. You are his child. He loves you. And he took steps. The Trinity took steps to get closer and closer and closer to you until God himself resides in you. When you accept his son, Jesus Christ, you get the gift of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and it is known as the comforter. It is known as the helper, that whatever you face, whatever you encounter, whatever you would go against, that God will be with you. Every step, every move, every mistake, every fault, God will be with you in every decision, in every problem, in every circumstance, in every loss, in every betrayal, in every denial. God is with you and He is there to comfort you. He is there to help you. He is there to lead you on paths of righteousness. That is what God is about. I see that the entire Bible is about Jesus and Jesus' purpose was to come to earth because He loved His creation. His purpose was to come to earth, to live a perfect life, to die on our behalf so that we, notice that Jesus' purpose is so that we may be saved. Wherever you are, whatever you've been through, whatever you've faced, God is for you. God is not against you. God loves you. God wants to comfort you. God the Son came on your behalf. God the Son felt your pain. He died for you so that you could inherit eternal life because God was not okay with you spending eternity away from Him. He created you to be in community with Him. He died so that you could spend eternity in His presence. Remember that as you go out this week. You are deeply loved. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I release content just like this every single week. So go ahead and slap that subscribe button right there. All right? All right, guys, keep on living that bold life.